People are building habits all the time. So that's the baseline, right? Whether you're thinking about it or not, it's already happening. So because it's already happening, um, I think it makes sense for us to shape our habits carefully, to think, to be thoughtful about it. And so when I say that, you know, amateurs or people, you know, many people are not, are the victim of their habits. I think that's often how it sort of feels to us. Like you're building these habits, you're going through life. You're just kind of trying to solve the problems that you face on a day to day basis. And you stumble into certain solutions. And before you know it, those solutions sort of become a pattern. You know, you get stuck in a rut or you start to like build a groove and, um, if that groove is not favorable, then you feel like, oh, my habits are happening to me. Like I have this thing that I do all the time. I never even set out to do it. Meanwhile, you you have a, a second option, which is you can start to be the architect of your habits. You can shape your environment. You can design the options that are presented to you. You can be more thoughtful and careful about who you follow on social media or what the items are on your desk or on your kitchen counter at home or the way that your office is laid out or making sure that you know a home gym is a more visible option in your home or whatever like there's just tons and tons of almost infinite number of options that you can do to try to design an environment where the good action is the path of least resistance with a more obvious thing and i think that's really the practical takeaway uh, if you buy into that idea that it's possible to shape your environment so that it's more favorable then i think the practical action step is probably two things one is you want to make Anything that's the cue of your good habits, anything that's visible or available, you want to make that obvious. You want to just put it in front of you, have it be the first thing that you see when you sit down at your desk or when you walk into the kitchen or whatever. And then the second thing is you want it to be easy. You want it to be the path of least resistance. So, you know, as much as possible, you're going to try to prime the environment so that it's ready for the next use or that it's, you know, uh, set up for you to succeed. If you write out what you, at the end of each workday, you can just write out like the top three things that you want to achieve for the next day or whatever number you want it to be. And then you take that little piece of paper and put it on top of your laptop or put it on the keyboard at your desktop or whatever. So that when you walk into your office tomorrow, the very first thing you see is something that reminds you of what your highest value actions are. Cause you're trying to prime the environment so that the next action is easy. So the next action is obvious. And the more that you can do that with health, work, wealth, all kinds of things, uh, the more it starts to pay off and you are less of a victim of what happens and more the architect of it. I think one useful question to ask yourself is rather than focusing on the behavior, let's talk about the identity. Uh, and so who is the type of person that could achieve that thing that I want to achieve? So, you know, very common New Year's resolution is lose weight. So instead of say lose 30 pounds, you can ask yourself, who is the type of person that could lose 30 pounds? And you realize, oh, well, maybe it's the type of person who doesn't miss workouts, or maybe it's the type of person who tracks their calories at each meal. And so now suddenly you have something very specific. You have like a very specific habit that you can try to build. Okay, I can try to build the habit of not missing workouts. Doesn't matter what I do during the workout. Doesn't matter how long it is. Doesn't matter how I feel. I'm just trying to not miss. That's the first step toward building that identity. Or, um, okay, now I need to track my calories. Doesn't matter what I eat, doesn't matter how much I eat or how often, I just need to build the habit of tracking it. In both of those examples, I tried to scale it down. Uh, and I think that's a big part of getting started is a lot of the time people think they are being simple uh, or keeping things simple when in fact it's much more complicated. So for example, let's say you you're like okay i'm gonna keep it simple i'm just gonna pick one goal i'm just gonna try to eat healthy this year but actually if you break it down there are a bunch of sub habits associated with that like if you're not currently cooking your own meals then now you got to start building a habit of meal planning uh grocery shopping you uh once you get the food at home now you need to start maybe you need to learn some knife skills or you just need to get better at cooking um, having all those recipes ready to go after the meal. If you're eating out a lot right now, you don't have many dishes. Now suddenly you have dirty dishes to clean. So there's, you know, three, four or five different things that are associated with that one habit of eating healthy. And so, um, as much as possible, I encourage people to scale it down because it's always a little more complicated than it seems on the surface. So let's start with a very small habit, a very easy habit, something that's I like the line from Leo Babalta where he says, make it so easy you can't say no. Um, and so I like to use like the two minute rule as a guide. Just scale it down something takes two minutes or less to do. And so, uh, you know, if you are trying to work out four days a week, 
All you have to do is put on your running shoes and step out the door. That'll take you two minutes, you're done. Now, if you run, that's a bonus, but like in the beginning, we're just trying to build a habit of showing up. If you can't master that, then, you know, there's nothing else to optimize. But a lot of the time, for some reason with habits, people get very all or nothing. They think if I can't, if I can't run three miles four days a week, why am I even bothering? And what I'm encouraging you to do is just scale it down to the smallest part possible, master the art of showing up, start building up evidence of that new identity. And then once you've done that, well, okay, now we're in a position where we can talk about scaling it up a little bit, but let's take it one, one step at a time.